Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for clicking on this video. Today we're going to continue the 2409 Starfleet tutorial here in Star Trek Online. So we're going to continue with my character Dex and we're just going to see uh, where this uh, tutorial leads us. Let's talk to Alyssa Flores here. We'll hit that F key. I'm going to check in and then head for the bridge. See you there. All right. So she's going to head to the bridge and we got to check in. It looks like to this person over here. You'll notice there's a little uh, box above the person with an exclamation point that denotes that you can go ahead and interact with that person or, um, yeah, get your inst further instructions from that person. So we're going to go ahead and talk to this person. By the way, we are on, um, what's our ship called? The I forgot from last time, the Balboa, yeah. So we're on the USS Balboa. Um, this is a Miranda-class ship. This is the shuttle bay here. And if you'll remember last time, we had a really nice cutscene as we got to the ship. So now here we are in the shuttle bay. Let's check in with this officer. It looks like it's uh, Lieutenant Brickers. Name and position. I have your record right here. Welcome aboard. Captain Taggart is waiting for you on the bridge. Use a turbo lift in the nearby quarter. It will take you directly there. All right. Let's continue. Again, if y'all want me to narrate these or the little options, let me know. I'm not doing it currently because I just felt like, I don't know, maybe it might get annoying after a little bit. But um, if not, let me know. I'll definitely go ahead and narrate those portions for y'all. So you can see here that we have this little arrow. So it's telling us where we need to go. We need to go to this turbo lift. So let's go ahead and do that. And we are going up to the bridge. So we'll just click that button or hit the F key in our keyboard. And here we are. We turbo lift onto the bridge of this Miranda class ship. And check out this bridge, y'all. They redid this not that long ago, and it looks fantastic. This is now the standard default bridge on all your Federation ships. And it's great. It's like a mix between um, the bridge from the Enterprise D and also just like a much smaller ship. Um, I don't know. I say smaller ship, but it looks kind of big at the same time. Look at all these different consoles and places to sit. So they actually probably made the bridge even bigger, but it looks great. Here you can see the Starfleet symbol. You can see the view screen. Um, we're over Earth, uh, so you can see Earth there in the background. And yeah, everybody's just at their duty stations doing their work. Let's see if we can explore just a little bit. Nope, we can't go to the captain's ready room. Let's see if we go... What is this over here? Turbo lift? Nope, this is the head or the bathroom. <laughs> so that's kind of neat. So it looks like we really can't go anywhere except maybe the turbo lifts. Currently, uh, none of these other doors open for us in the tutorial. However, I do believe that um, if this is the bridge of your ship, you'll be able to open at least one or two more of those doors and go in. You can see a list of floors back here. It looks like this is the tactical station with this little kind of roll bar, kind of like, again, like in the Enterprise D. So they did such a good job of this. I really like the look of this bridge. And again, this is the default bridge for all your Federation ships, and it's a beautiful one to boot. So um, you do have options for other bridges um, in this game that you can purchase separately. But honestly, this bridge is so good that you really don't need to. This is just really nice, and I, I enjoy it quite a bit. All right, so let's check in with the captain. I've been kind of walking around and, and inspecting the bridge, but we got to check in here. Let's talk to Captain Taggart. Welcome to the bridge number one. Early in my career, I served with a captain who called his first officer that. I always <laughs> liked it. As my number one, I expect you to ensure my orders are carried out and to advise me on the best course of action in any situation. But first, we need to get out of dry dock, get clearance from control, and close the shuttle bay doors. Then disable the tractor moorings. All right, let's close the shuttle bay doors first. Shuttle bay doors are closed, sir. All right. Very good, number one. <laughs> then uh, let's get clearance from traffic control. Earth traffic control has cleared us to depart, sir. Very good, number one. 
All right, so we're gonna disable the tractor beam moorings and we're gonna do this at the station back here. So we'll just walk around and then we will release the tractor moorings by pressing the F key or clicking the button. All right, so we did that already. And let's talk to Captain Taggart again. Potter, take us out. One quarter impulse. All right, this is kind of neat. I have two options to reply here. I can say, Captain, may I remind you that Starfleet regulations specify thrusters only while in the vicinity of space dock, or I could just remain silent. So, for those of you who've seen um, The Undiscovered Country, Star Trek The Undiscovered Country, which is the sixth movie in the series, and the last one um, that included the entirety of the, um, the original series crew, um, there's a part where a Vulcan officer, I believe it's Laris or something like that, um, where, you know, <laughs> Kirk says the same thing to take out, take the ship out at one quarter impulse power, and then she corrects him and says, hey, regulation says that you're not supposed to do that, and then uh, Spock reminds her that he's, that Kirk is the captain and just do it, <laughs> basically. So here we have the option to be like, like that Vulcan officer or that other Vulcan officer from from the undiscovered country or we could just remain silent in my case I'm just gonna remain silent because I'm like he's a captain if he wants to go out quarter or quarter impulse power out of dry dock let's do it <laughs> all right now it looks like I have to sit in the chair so the way to do that is I mean you could be facing it it doesn't matter but you see that Below the, um, basically the pointer, you see a little chair icon on it. If you, I believe it's right click, yeah. If you right click on the chair, it will sit your character. Cleared from dry dock, Captain. Good. Let's start with something easy. Set course for Vulcan. Course lead in, sir. Engage. And there goes our little ship, the Balboa. Captain, I'm picking up an automated distress call from the SS Breakeven. Their warp core is failing, and they require immediate assistance. Let them know we're on our way. Potter, lay in a rendezvous course. Altering course, sir. ETA three minutes. They are not responding to our hails, Captain. Keep trying, Trevel. Their long-range comms might be down. Number one, let's discuss the situation. Oh. Where'd An unexpected Chico? situation, number one. But such things come with the job. What do you think we should do? Well, for a second there, it looked like he was sitting on the floor and the chair was missing. So I guess it's just one of those little bugs in the game. Um, all right, he's asking me what we should do. I'll ask him if it's a test. Absolutely not. We're the closest ship to the break even, so it's our duty to assist. Indeed. We also don't know what led to this situation either. It could have been an accident or the results of an attack. What do you advise? So here you have three different options depending on how you want to role play. Um, for, personally, I don't think we need to go guns blazing, so I'm going to choose that option number two that says shields up, better safe than sorry. At least we're protected from attack if need be um, without being too confrontational. Raising the shields does seem to be a reasonable precaution. Indeed. Yellow alert. Raise shields. Number one, I'd like you to oversee the rescue effort once we arrive. All right. Here we go into the cutscene. Still no response from the break even, Captain. Scan them. Maybe they're unable to respond to our signal. Captain, our oh. shields are collapsing. Flores, return fire. Pattern Delta Sierra 9. Well, there go the shields. Not good. Engineering to bridge. Go ahead, engineering. Sir, the Borg are here. We need help. Well. <laughs> right, number one. I want you to go to main engineering and lead the security team efforts there. Get those Borg off my ship. Yep. So crazy. Like even in the tutorial, you are put right into the thick of things. We went to go save that freighter that's shown on the view screen, 
and instead we got ambushed by a Borg sphere and then they proceeded to board our ship and you can hear everybody yelling in the background there in engineering so we're going to go ahead and head down to the engineering deck and see what we can do to help. Sorry for the emergency stop number one but there's a problem in the transporter room. The Borg are trying to take it over most likely to prevent us from using site to site transports within the ship. Head to the armory near your position. Arm yourself and any security officers you find on the way. Once you're armed, I need you to go to the transporter room and secure it as soon as possible. We're holding our own so far, number one, but our success depends on securing the ship. Do what you can to get the Borg out of critical areas. You need yes, to sir. the armory. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> So check it out. You can see the damage in the halls and some of this plasma coming out. So let's go ahead and go where the security officers are at and unlock this door. Enter the command code. I'm about to. Very insistent uh, Andorian there. We should grab rifles to fight off the Borg. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. Again, you have these little arrows points you to where to go. Also, the console lights up when you're near it. You know that you could interact with it. All right, we get this little cool, uh, cool little um, what is this? A uh, phaser locker. We're gonna go ahead and grab a rifle. We already have a phaser gun or phaser pistol that we got earlier from doing that um, that training before that tactical training in the hollow deck, and now we're gonna get a rifle. <laughs> that Andorian is super eager. All right. Oh, actually, that was the human dude. He was super eager. All right. So we have the rifle. However, we don't have it equipped. So let me show you how to do that. So in order to go into your inventory, the inventory is, say, like a locker that holds all your stuff, right? One of the lockers. You have one on your person, and then you have one that's part of basically every ship. But let's go ahead and hit the I key in the keyboard. That's the I key. And then your inventory opens up. And here you can see how many slots you have. We have a limited amount of slots, but more can be purchased in the game as you go. And more will be given as you level up also. So right here we can see that we have the rifle. It's a level one rifle. Um, it's a common and I'll talk to you a little bit about the different uh, types of weapons and, and um, you know, between common and ultra rare, things like that. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and equip the rifle. Now, in order to equip it, you're going to want to go ahead and open up your character um, window. In your character window, you could open it up by hitting the U key on your keyboard. So the U key opens up your character window. And right here, you can see that there are different slots that your character has. You have kit module slots, and we can talk about those later. We have a kit, um, a kit slot here, and then we have body, shield, weapons. You have two slots for weapons, and then you have this area called devices, and you have four slots for that. Now, right here, you can see that one of the devices that we have is a small hypo spray. We have three of those. You know that we have three of those by the number that's right down below it you see a number three there so that tells you how many you have these are what what are called consumables if they have a number underneath it's a consumable device it means that once you use one of those you'll have two left and then once you use up those two you'll have none left unless you gather more in the game so just be aware of that now if it doesn't have a number underneath it that means you could probably use it over and over again now some of them have a time limit on it where you have to wait it's called a cooldown and that wait period then could be anywhere from, I don't know, two minutes. It could be seconds. It depends on the device, right? So maybe you have a device in your inventory here or a device here on your character that you could use and that'll help you out. But then after it helps you out, you got to wait two minutes for it to load up again for you to be able to use it. Just keep that in mind for, for the different devices. So we're gonna take this rifle from our inventory, we're gonna put it in our character, and we're just gonna slot it right here into that one um, slot. 
it's going to ask you, it's going to say, if you equip the phaser rifle, you won't be able to trade it. That's okay. We don't need to trade it right now. So we'll click Status okay. Report number one. About to leave the armory. Very well. We're reading Borg life signs in your area. Looks like you'll have to fight your way to the transporter room. Good luck. All right. All right, so we're going to go and help help out. Now, the way to equip your rifle is if you'll notice right down here in this tool toolbar, you'll see that the weapon in the forefront is a phaser beam pistol. If we want it to be the rifle and we want to use a rifle, you're going to hit this key to the left of it that says switch weapons. If you hover over it, it says switch weapons. There's one underneath it that just says holster or draw your weapon. We're going to go to switch weapons and then there you go you see that you have your rifle equipped there's a key also on the keyboard to be able to do that and I'm trying to remember what it is okay it's the Z key so the Z key Z as in zebra on your keyboard will allow you to also go ahead and switch your weapons alright so we're gonna do the rifle again because that's what we were asked to use and equip now there are two firing modes on here. The first one is just a bolt setting. So the bolt is just gonna fire a bolt of energy at the enemy. Um, and then the secondary firing mode on here is called sniper shot. So if you remember the hand phaser, the secondary one was like a stun beam to stun your target. Well in this case for the rifle is gonna be a sniper shot. Now the sniper shot takes longer to fire because it's like, if, like you're a sniper, right? You're gonna take your time on it. However, it's going to do slightly more damage. So there's a trade-off, right? You won't be able to shoot quite as often. However, the shot that you do um, fire will be um, something that's a little bit more powerful. So we're going to go ahead and head out and help these security officers. Here we are in the hallway. Everything's smoking. Red alert. Here we go. We got some Borg drones. Let's go ahead and fire at them. I'm hitting the one key for the bolts. So same kind of thing that we did with the hand phaser the number one key to fire the first um, firing setting and if you want you could hit the two key for the secondary firing mode for this big old drone right here the tactical drone I'm gonna go ahead and do the number two key alright and with that one shot I was able to take him down so we're gonna go ahead and grab this all right, so as you fight throughout the game, whether it be in space or in ground, you're going to have these little devices that drop. And these are called just drops in the game, right? So what they are is, um, if you grab them by hitting the F key or take item, hit the button, you'll see that we just picked up a medium hypo. Remember before that I said that hypos are basically consumable right items so in this case we are able to replenish some of our stock and this one's actually a little bit better than the ones we currently have because the ones we currently have are small hypos and this one is a medium hypo so it'll give us a little bit yes I know life support is failing man you just hear that in the background all the time <laughs> they really try to make it very realistic for you so all right, let's go ahead and go into this next section, this transporter room. All right, let's help this officer out. Let's see, see, we can't do secondary fire mode. Oh, somebody needs help over here. All right, who's this? Oh, it's Cadet Rark. So he's one of the cadets that we interacted with earlier at the academy thanks you saved me from a fate worse than death <laughs> I'll get back to manning the transporters that's going to be a problem we took some hard hits in the initial salvo and there are hole breaches in the corridor I don't think you can make it there we still have main power so yes yes I think I can Get on the transporter pad and I'll beam you there. Awesome. So Ensign Rourke is going to go ahead and beam me over to engineering. So we're going to get on the transporter pad. It's pretty cool. Very nice looking. And we're going to go ahead and beam to engineering. Awesome. 
Awesome, so here we are in the outskirts of engineering, and we're just gonna go ahead and go forward. Your timing is fortuitous, sir. We are making a push to retake main engineering. So, these Borg are not particularly hard because you're in the tutorial, so... Just know that later on in the game, they get a lot harder. <laughs> Alright, looks like we took them out. Oh, there's one more over here in the corner. I don't know why these officers here have their backs to the enemy, but that's not a good way to fight. Alright, looks like we took him out. We gotta speak to Zarva, who's over here. Oh, okay, I've got an idea. I saw this in a Starfleet history sim, so I'm pretty sure it'll work. I need you to prepare the plasma coolant for emergency release. <laughs> Any riskier than standing around while the Borg send over more drones? I don't think so. Hurry, I do not want to be assimilated. No, thank you. Yeah, I don't want to be assimilated either. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and prepare the coolant release here. By the way, this is a warp course. Very nice looking. Not good. Not good. We need to go now. Quick, release the plasma coolant. Cool. It worked! <laughs> Data, you mad android genius! It actually <laughs> worked! I love you! Bet you're glad I was paying attention in history class that day. That plasma coolant really did a number on the Borg. They won't be coming back here anytime soon. That's good. That's very, very good. Number one, we've got injured up here and the Borg could send a boarding party at any time. I need you back on the bridge. Go, see to the bridge. We will secure main engineering. All right, sounds good. So they'll stay here with Cadet Zarva, which is currently our engineer. And all the Borg that were back here are dead because releasing the plasma um, took care of all their organic matter. And all that was left was the electronic components, and they can't survive that way. We'll turbo lift to the bridge now. And that was really cool because that was um, basically a callback to Star Trek First Contact, where um, Data does the same thing to the Borg. Oh. There are Borg on the bridge. The bridge is secure, for now. Help the others back onto their feet, number one. We may have more unwanted guests before too long. All right, let's go ahead and do that. By the way, I want to show you something real quick before we do that. There is a mode um, on ground combat where you aim, and then aiming allows your weapons to do better damage on ground. Just a little bit better, but still better damage than not aiming. And what you want to do to enable that is to hit the X key on your keyboard. So hit the X key on your keyboard and you can see that he switches between aiming and not aiming. So you're going to get more out of your weapons, a little bit more out of your weapons in ground combat if you're aiming them versus not aiming them. I know a lot of people, they don't do it um, either because they don't know or they just don't care but it will give you a little bit more damage in ground by hitting the X key and aiming your weapon. All right, let's help out the crew. Let's start off over here with this cadet. Oh, I owe you. Both
both of you. Thanks. That is Rasky. We met him earlier, and Tavrel we met earlier as well. Let's heal her up. You have my gratitude. Nice work, number one. Oh, looks like that phase of training paid off. Captain, look out! Captain, the Borg vessel has gone to warp and left the system. Based on the amount of damage they sustained, it is logical to assume they disengaged in order to regenerate safely. All right, so that's a bummer. The Borg just ran off with our captain. <laughs> So now we're going to have to try to track him down and get him back. So we're going to go ahead and talk to Alyssa. Looks like that's the next thing we're going to do. We, we survived. But the captain, Captain Tiger, he knew what would happen. And he gave the order anyway. Ultimate sacrifice. One that we all might be called to make someday. He trusted you to take command. All we can do now... Survive. So it looks like I gotta. Him. Looks like I gotta take my seat in the captain's chair. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I am temporarily in command since I'm the first officer of the ship, and the captain's been taken by the Borg. We're gonna go ahead and again sit in this chair by hitting that right key on the mouse. That right button. All right, so here we are in space. This is where we're going to start um, doing some space. All decks reporting in, sir. We took some casualties, and sick bay is full. All ship systems have taken some damage, but some are worse than others. Life support is stable, but anything else could be an issue. All right, before I was interrupted by my my tactical officer, Lisa Flores, what I was going to say is this is where we'll be able to do some space combat and kind of be introduced to that part of it. So we're gonna go ahead and stop this video here and then we'll pick it up a little bit later. I hope that that was interesting. This introduced us a little bit more to the ground combat portion. Now we're gonna do move on to the space combat portion in the next video. If you're enjoying these, these um, kind of 101 classes for Star Trek Online, please go ahead and leave a like down below and um, let me know in the comments and hopefully we'll be able to go ahead and continue doing these for you. And if you want me to, again, start narrating some of this stuff, please let me know also. If you prefer it this way, also let me know and um, we'll go ahead and continue doing that. So, all right, that's it for today. Live long and prosper, everyone. Thanks so much for watching again and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.